Dr. Ken here with you. Again, we're looking at uh, just connecting AC components. This time we're looking at connecting AC components in parallel. So what's that all about? We're going to learn about how to connect things in parallel. And the big skill here is being able to interpret a circuit diagram. So let's get underway. So here's our basic components you may remember this from our series video we have a AC power supply which is simply reducing the 240 volts down to 12 15 17 20 24 27 or 30 volts uh, we're going to be using the 12 today it has an on off switch and a common or what we often in AC would call the neutral if you remember there's no real plus or minus, despite the colours that we might be using for our terminals. In AC, there is no actual polarity. The polarity is constantly changing backwards and forwards for the main supply in Australia at 50 times a second. Uh, we have a switch box. You can see here with my arrow. It's got two switches on the switch box. We're only going to be using the bottom switch to turn on and off the supply to our little parallel circuit we're going to be using an inductor you can see here a capacitor and again our incandescent lamp as a nice simple high power resistor so that's our basic components power supply switch inductor capacitor and resistor so circuit skills are what this is all about and one of the basic circuit skills is being able to identify what is a resistor, what is an inductor, and what is a capacitor. And part of the way we can do that identification is by understanding the component sizes. Now, I don't necessarily mean their physical size, but their sizes in which they're measured electrically. For inductors, inductors are measured in Henry's, and our inductor is 1,347 millihenries. Our capacitor are measured in farads after Michael Faraday and they're measured most often in microfarads, that's times 10 to the minus 6 and in this particular case our capacitor is about a 400 volt capacitor at 10 microfarads. So capacitors have two ratings they have their capacitive rating in farads, but as I just mentioned, they also have a withstand voltage. So the maximum voltage that a capacitor can withstand. Then finally, we have our resistor and understanding in this particular case, our resistor is 14 ohms, and that's just the resistance of the incandescent lamp cold. It offers us a large power resistor, so we can't do any damage to it. We'll never actually put enough current through it to illuminate it, but it will offer us 14 ohms. As I mentioned before, what about polarity? Um, most of our components in this little video have a black and a red terminal, and actually it's not plus or minus, it's just start and finish. As I mentioned before, AC components by their very nature and definition don't have polarity so there is no plus and minus it's just start and finish and this little video is all about being able to interpret a simple circuit diagram and then connect it up to the physical components I find most students can often find this process quite difficult it comes with uh, lots of understanding of electrotechnology how diagrams work and how we connect things together in the real world. So let's get on with connecting circuits in parallel. So let's look at our components now and the circuit diagram. So we're going to have our inductor, you can see my cursor here, is on the inductor. Our inductor is a ballast from a 240 volt fluorescent tube at about uh, 36 odd watts and it's simply a piece of copper wire wrapped around a iron core. You can see the symbol for this here 
you can see the windings represented by the loops on the drawing and the solid bar indicates that there is an iron core. So this is the symbol for an inductor and this is what the inductor actually looks like. Here we have a capacitor. This is probably something in the order of a 400 volt capacitor, in our case a 10 microfarads. Capacitors are basically two plates with an electrolyte in between them, hence the circuit diagram or the symbol for a capacitor. We just draw the two plates, we leave a gap in the middle, assuming there's some kind of electrolyte, and that gives us our capacitor. So capacitance is all about the amount of surface area. The more surface area, the more capacitance. And then finally, our resistor. The symbol is a simple rectangle. In this case, our resistor is the filament, and you can just see where my cursor is, the filament of the lamp made of tungsten, so that offers us a nice high wattage resistor, in this case at 14 ohms. So that is our resistor. The circuit, as you can see here, if we were to think of each component having a start and a finish, and uh, I might just draw that on the diagram for you. So... We have components with starts and finishes. Each component has a start and a finish. Start and a finish. And in parallel, we're simply connecting all the starts together and all the finishes together. And then connecting that to the supply. So you can see here starts and finishes. In uh, our little connection that we're going to be doing in a moment, I've also introduced a switch. So we have a terminal. We have a nice simple switch. And it's connected to here. And again, it has a start and it has a finish. Now, you may ask which end is the start and which end is the finish. It doesn't matter because there is no polarity. We've just nominated starts and finishes. This, of course, is all connected to a power supply. And we're going to connect to the active on our power supply. You'll probably notice that I've used the 12 volts on this particular occasion. So we have an active through a switch. And then our switch is connecting the supply to start, finish, start, finish in parallel. Our final terminal comes back to the neutral on the power supply, so we just use a capital N for neutral. So the reality is the little circuit that we're going to be looking at uh, today has a series component because up here the switch is connected to the circuit in series, but the components themselves are connected in parallel because all the starts of our inductor, our capacitor and our resistor are connected together and then all the finishes are connected together and that comes back to the supply. So let's move on to that next picture. So here we have our first connection picture and you can see I have a red wire coming from the 12 volt supply on my power supply around and connected to the switch. Now we're going to leave, that's the only connection we're going to do for the switch at the beginning. We're now going to connect the components together in parallel. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the inductor start to the capacitor start. So in this particular case, the black terminal to the black terminal, I've got that connected together. On the next picture, I'll oh, just a reminder before we move to the next picture, what we've done is we have simply 
connected the link in here where my cursor is so inductor to capacitor this wire here where my cursor is oscillating backwards and forwards the next one we're going to do is this one here we're going to connect the capacitor to the resistor so you can see here I've in the first connection I connected the start of the inductor to the start of the capacitor now I've connected the start of the capacitor to the start of the resistor so that's all my starts connected together let's just make sure we understand exactly where they are so that's a start connected there and a start connected there and a start has been connected there. So in effect, we've now connected the inductor to the capacitor, the capacitor to the resistor. Now we're going to do the finishes. So we're going to connect the inductor finish to the capacitor and the capacitor to the resistor on the opposite side. And you can see here now the yellow wires. I've used yellow to connect the finish of the inductor to the finish of the capacitor. Then moving forward again so we've put this one in here we've now put that conductor in and now finally we're putting in our second loop and you can see here the yellow now represents the connecting together of the finishes so basically now I have the finish of the inductor connected to the finish on the capacitor connected to the finish on the resistor. So now it's time to uh, connect our switch and our supply to this parallel network. So you can see here, just go through it again. The blue wire connects all the starts. The yellow wire connects all the finishes. So we've now connected all the starts together here. And we've connected all the finishes together here on the bottom of the diagram. So hopefully you're starting to see the connection, if you'll excuse the pun, between the circuit diagram and the connection of the components. So now I've simply connected the switch supply to the starts. So I've now got my 12 volt supply through a switch here, then the switch connected to the starts or the blue wires that connect everything in parallel. So the switch is in series, but the inductor, the capacitor and the resistors are in parallel. So I've just done the front end of the power supply. Now I've added the white wire you can see I've come from the yellow which is all the finishes so all the finishes connected together on the yellow and then the finish is connected back and you'll see that comes back to the black terminal or the common or the neutral on our power supply so that completes our circuit we'll just go through it again we've got the 12 volt supply in series with a switch that switch then supplies all the starts indicated by the blue loop. So start 
connected to start, connected to start. Then I've got my common on the white, connected to all the finishes, which is the yellow. So finish to finish to finish. And again, our diagram is now complete because we've now got a 20 volt, a 12 volt supply in this case from and into our capacitors, our resistor and our inductor on the starts and the neutral connected to the finishes. So let's just draw that with the pen tool. So effectively, I've come from my power supply I've come through a switch I've connected to here then I've simply looped all my starts and finishes together remember that was the blue wire so I use blue for the loop Then I connected all of my finishes together and I used the yellow I'll just abbreviate it to YEL full stop the yellow wire and then I connected the finishes back to the power supply to my neutral or my common with the white wire. So there's my white wire hard to, hard to draw or write letters with a drawing tool so going through it again I have a switch I'll just abbreviate that to SW starts here at the active it's in series till it gets to the capacitor then we looped it with a red wire to our blue loop and our blue loops were on the starts of each of the components our yellow wire was looped on all the finishes and then we connected that with a white wire back to the neutral on our power supply so I hope that's made things a little more clearer for you so we now understand how to connect AC components in parallel. So I hope you've enjoyed our little introduction to uh, AC circuits and uh, you've learned a little bit about how to connect AC components together in parallel.